Hi guys, I've got another episode of Reviews and Previews. We're back on another Friday night. Friday afternoon, we'll say. It's not dark yet. Um, We're back, another crazy week of Premier League football happened last week. It was absolutely mad. Um, Friday night, what a win for Arsenal, 3-1. Brilliant result for them. Chelsea battered Norwich, 7-0. Newcastle United got a draw against Palace. Pretty lucky, I'd say. Brilliant goal from Wilson. We'll talk about that later. F, F Watford came from behind from 2-1 to beat Watford. To beat Everton at the 5-2. That was mad. Uh, Leeds got a 94th minute. Um, Equaliser, was it? Yeah. Um, Southampton and Burnley. That was a good match. Man City got a win. Leicester beat Brentford. West Ham beat Tottenham. Let's go. And the result of the week. It was a good game for Liverpool. 5-0 against United. That was mad. Um, Mo Salah, he's, he's the Egyptian king. If he doesn't win like some sort of award this season, it's mad. Um, even the form of his life, uh, he just can't get much better at the minute. Man United looks shocking. I don't know how Oli Gunnar Solskjaer has not been sacked yet, but, you know, it's mad, you know. Um, If it, anybody other than Solskjaer, and he would have been sacked, because that is humiliation. That's embarrassing. They were four 0 down even before. No, they were five 0 down when Pogba got sent off. So it wasn't even like they were like they couldn't even have like the the thing that they only had ten men because they had eleven men for the five goals and then Liverpool just passed around the back for about thirty minutes. So you know, didn't want to inflict any more damage on them. Anyway, let's get into Arsenal's result against Aston Villa. It was a brilliant game for Arsenal. Blue Villa away in the first half. Thomas Partey got his first goal for the Gunners. It was brilliant. Um, brilliant little header. Well, I was off his shoulder, actually, from a corner from Smith Row. And then Aubameyang, we got a penalty. It was a bit dodgy. Matt Target challenged Lacazette, who played in a bit of a cam role where Odegaard would normally play. So that was a bit of a good tactic from Bikel Arteta. And then we got a penalty from it. Aubameyang missed it, but then Aubameyang tapped it in because he... Martinez saved it. Martinez obviously knows where he's going to put it. And then Aubameyang tapped it in on the rebound, as you can see there. Very good finish from him. Um, brilliant performance. Then in the, in the second half, Smith throw rounded it off the, the third. Brilliant goal. Got deflected. Brilliant little attack, counter attack move. And yeah, it's brilliant. Brilliant performance for Arsenal. Jacob Ramsey. I mean, Ramsey got a goal for Villa. Unfortunately, it wasn't Aaron. Um, Jacob Ramsey got a brilliant goal into the top corner. To be fair. Consolation only though, three one to Arsenal. Up the table we go into the top half, and on Tuesday I went to see him as you just saw on my channel. Arsenal v Leeds. I posted that a couple of days ago. Of the players coming out, it was obviously second team for Arsenal, but they did do very well. They probably could have been behind the first half. It was a, it was a good game, and yeah, and they got they got past Leeds in the end. Good goal from Chambers after coming twenty three seconds off the. Um, bench to get a goal and then Nketiah got a goal from about a yard out after a bit of a defensive mix up Leeds looked in trouble at the minute from what I could see atmosphere was pretty good in the Emirates considering it wasn't full and yeah it was a pretty, pretty good day out for me and you know good day for Arsenal as well so the unbeaten run stretches um, they, they just need to keep their form going at the minute they've got a few hard games coming up so they got to, got to just get through this period if they can get like sort of into that top six at the minute, we're about 10th, I think. On Friday, we were 9th. I think we've dropped to 10th now. <sighs> um, yeah, it was a good, good little game from everyone. Um, in terms of what they need to improve on, Arsenal just improve a bit on their... Well, they've got a few injuries, actually, at the minute. There's not a lot to improve on. They've just got a few injuries, and Ben White is apparently a sickness bug going around at the minute, so that's not good. Anyway... Good performances from Arsenal in the week, so let's go on to Newcastle. And it was a brilliant result for them against Palace, another point. Um, well, not brilliant, but a good result, we'll take it. For God's sake. Da -da 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 -da. Here we go, come on, it's going to load, you know it. Da -da 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 -da. Come on, where is the data? Where is my data? For some reason, my Wi-Fi in my room does not work. It's, it's just bad. I don't want to go into I'm in Chelsea, Norwich. I don't care about Mason Mount. Here we go. Um, Callum Wilson got an overhead kick equaliser after Ben Teke, who probably should have had about five. <laughs> but look at the possession stats for us. Um, hang on. 
25%. Fabulous, we love to see it. We start Graham Jones in his first game in charge, started a 5-3-2, which is what we played at the end of last season. And it actually sort of worked, so fair play. We looked a bit, we looked quite solid at the back. Palace can break us down, but Palace can't normally break many people down, so it's not really a tough ask. Palace without Zaha didn't look too good, but Benteke got a good header that went in. He hit the post, he missed the setter. Guy had a goal disallowed, obviously, and that was rightly disallowed because Mark Guehi pulled on Kevin Clark's shirt, so that was obviously a disallowed, had to be disallowed. Um, Newcastle just need to start with this. It's a good place to start. They just need to keep on going. Wilson's technique, it was beautiful. It wasn't exactly powerful. It was just, like, aimed and perfect into the top corner. It was just, like, off the ground. It was pretty beautiful. Um, that's the only bit of quality we had in the game, I'd say. We had nothing else. We had one goal. We had one shot cleared off the line, but that was it, really. Nothing else. Um... We st we struggled again, and it was a pretty. It wasn't the best. It wasn't the best match of the day, um, or of the weekend. Um, but Wilson got player of the match there. Um, we probably we probably. Des I don't think we deserved a draw, but we got one anyway. But Newcastle just needed that draw just to get back into the swing of things, really. Get a bit of a run of results going now. But the fixtures we've got coming up, it's looking quite hard at the minute. Um, anyway, let's go straight into this week's fixtures. So we'll see what's going to happen this week. Starting with Leicester Arsenal, here we go. Right, I'm going to go Leicester. So, see, I've had many different predictions for this. I'm going to go Leicester 2, Arsenal 2. I'm going to go for a draw, because I think... I would pick, I would go for Arsenal to win, but the fact that Jamie Vardy is fit is a major factor there. Um, Burnley 0, Brentford 0. That'll be a bad game. Uh, Liverpool 2, Brighton 0. Man City 3, Palace 1, Newcastle 1, Chelsea 3, Watford, ooh, that's weird. Watford 1, Southampton 1. Ooh, Man United got a big game against Tottenham, this could be crucial whether Solskjaer keeps his job or not. Um, I'm going to go Tottenham 1, Man United 1. On to Sunday, we've got a bit of a, oh gosh, that's hard, uh, Norwich and Leeds right at the bottom of the table. Uh, I'm gonna go Norwich one Leeds two. Aston Villa nil West Ham two. And then on the Monday we've got Wolves Everton go Wolves two Everton one. And then we've got another Friday night game next week to look forward to. Which is Southampton Villa, so we'll get on to that too next week. Um anyway, on to Leicester Arsenal. And if it loads, obviously, I'd be thankful if it loads because and then I've got one bar. Come in data. Oh my lord. Oh, I did not mean to do that. Premier League. I wish my things once again. Um, what can I tell you about this game actually? If it doesn't load. Come on. Oh, two bars. Come on, come on, come on. Please. Please give me two bars. Just give me two bars. I'll do. Come on. Yes. It's going to do it. It's going to do it. It's going to do it. Believe, believe, believe. Oh, please. Anyway, um. Leicester Arsenal, this is gonna be a tricky game for Arsenal. Leicester are playing well at the minute. Here we go. Jamie Vardy scored seven goals in nine Premier League. He's the second top scorer actually, he's doing very well. Um in terms of injuries, Ben White is, could be out, which is a bit of a miss because he's been doing well. But Gabriel because he played on Tuesday, Ben White, he had a bit of an injury. He went off injured and he also has a stomach bug or something, so I'm not sure if that's gonna be good. Um Jamie Vardy is unfortunately going to be fit for this game. Um, he isn't my fancy footballer, so silver lining, you know. He always seems to score against us, so I put my money on him scoring, to be honest. Um, who are Arsenal going to line up with this time? Um, let's find the formation we need. 43-1, obviously. Aaron Ramsdale in goal. Um, to be fair, Lanu played alright in goal the other day. Um, if Ben White's not fit, we'll probably have to play Rob Holding. Also, he went off injured as well, actually. Hmm. That could be interesting. Callum Chambers, he's an option. Um, <laughs> obviously, Taka Hero Tomiyasu, who's been playing well recently at the back. Him and hopefully Kieran Tierney. Now, if he doesn't play, Tavares. I, I I I could trust him, um, just about. Obviously, Thomas Partey and Bakonga in the middle of midfield once again. With um, Lacazette playing his role again, and then the front four is normal, I'd say, which would be Smith around the left, Saka on the right, and Ober up front. 
See, so Smith already played in the midweek, but luckily they come off after a while. So, did he actually? I can't remember. Did he? Oh, he came off for Lacazette. So, there is my team for Arsenal. Um, I think that that is probably quite realistic, to be honest, because I think we're struggling a bit on injuries. I think in terms of what happens in this game, Leicester got the fans behind him. I think this has been close. Um, I think Arsenal can win this. I mean, their run has been doing well, but I think they can be got at if Ben White is not in the team. I think we can be got at. I think we're still solid, but we can be got at at the back. I think it'll be... I think this will be a close game, but I I think it'll be a draw. I'm going to go a draw. I'd lean towards an Arsenal win, but I'm just going to go a draw because I think Leicester are playing very well and you can't underrate what they're doing at the minute. Tielemans is in brilliant form. Uh, Madison's got a goal last week, back in form. Uh, Ian actually did well. Uh, Vardy went off last week, but he is, he is fit this week, unfortunately. Anyway, on to the Newcastle game against Chelsea. This is going to be hard. Um, uh, so I've got fancy football problems in this because I've put in Trevor Chalabar and he might not start, so that could be a bit of an issue because of the because you can never really tell who's going to start at the back for Chelsea. Whoever does start, they'll do a job. Um, Chelsea always do well. I think they always beat us at home. Have we ever beaten? Beaten them recently under Lampard, actually. How did we do last? Oh, we lost against them last season, actually. I think Werner missed a sitter, but you know they still beat us. Um. John Joshua is available. He only got one match ban, thank God. Oh, the Brasca's back as well? Oh my God, it's all going up in the world. If Shelby's back, I would probably not play him actually because the team did well last week. But we're obviously going to match Chelsea with our five at the back. Not three at the back, obviously. Um, and we haven't even got the Brasca on there, so we have to put Darlo in. If the Brasca is back, I would play him. Maybe not in this game, actually. Maybe after this game, I'd put get the Brasca back in. Uh, middle of park, we got to go to Lascelles with Kieran Clark. I would start pretty much the same team, to be honest. I might actually be tempted to start. Mm, I don't know, actually. Because where's Emil Craft? He's been, he's, he's all right. Um, Mankia, go for it. Um, Matt Ritchie. I mean, these, these, Matt Ritchie's not a defender, but he's playing left wing back, so you know, he's been forced to do it, I guess. Um, who else played last week? Was it Hayden? Yeah, Hayden probably played. Um, I'd go for Willock, and I'd probably go for... Hmm, um, probably Almiron, actually, yeah. So where is he? Where's Miggy? At the top, there he is. And then, obviously, St. Max and... Da, 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 Wilson up front. So that should be how we should line up, I reckon. <laughs> That'd be a good way to line up. That's pretty much the same team as last time, but I placed Willock and Elmer on for Longstaff and Fraser. But I think this is going to be a pretty, pretty easy win for Chelsea. Um, they'll probably they, Chelsea just seem to get wins out of nowhere. They just they can they can always do well. Hopefully Newcastle don't get thrashed. Like if it's less than three 0 I'll be happy. Like two 0 I'll take. Like that's not bad as long as Newcastle put in a performance. The thing is, though, Newcastle have scored in, like, eight out of their nine Premier League games this season, but they've conceded in all of them, so that's their problem. They can score goals, but they just can't not concede. It's, their, their, their defending this year has been absolutely horrible. I just can't believe how bad they've been at defending. Like, normally they're quite a good unit, defensive-wise, but under Steve Bruce, obviously, that's the stats that's let him down. It's had to see him go, hopefully... Graham Jones can get a bit of a result this week, and, yeah, you never know. You never really know. Um, into the let's go into the top scorers. So, I'm, so there you go. I don't think either of my teams will get a win this week, unfortunately. I mean, Newcastle haven't got one all season. That's not really saying much, is it? Anyway, I mean, to the top scorer Salah after last week's hat trick. He blew in on miles clear of Vardy and Antonio. Mane on five, even though he didn't even play last week. Fernandez, Firmino, Jota, Aubameyang and Wilson into the joint fifth. Look how many people are in fifth on four goals. It's all very close, isn't it? Um, onto the table. Oh, I did look at the assists, actually. Hang on. Top assists. Pogba's still there. Salah's gaming on him. Jesus. He's going to do what Harry Kane did last year. And then he won Golden Boot and Playmaker, or whatever it's called. St. Max still up there on the place. I'll take it. Uh... Kovacic has been doing well on assists, actually, hasn't he? 
Uh, we're onto the table then. Chelsea still top it. Those top three look like they might pull away from the rest of the league at the minute. Look how close it is from fifth all the way down to tenth. Look at that. Just one point separating all of that. Right, ninthly tenth, Arsenal and Leicester. That's going to be close. Uh, West Ham doing well at the minute. Tottenham one point ahead of Arsenal. Really. Brighton still doing well in fifth. And then at the bottom we've got Norwich. Minus 21 goal difference. I think we can say they're gone. Um, unless, unless something, a miracle happens, really. Leeds are struggling. Southampton aren't doing too well. Crystal Palace playing good football, but only on nine points. And I still don't really trust Watford, even though they did win 5-2 last weekend. Burnley. Well, Sean Dyke should always get in that trouble. And Newcastle. Well, we're done for. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video, guys. I've, uh, I mean, I hope you enjoyed. Like, subscribe, all the good stuff down below. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Bye.